All right, so there are some questions here in the chat, which uh, I will come to. But here in class, uh, there were a few questions. I'll try and address it. First one is how to have strong faith, right? How to, yeah, that's the second question. OK, so how to have strong faith? So for faith, we need an anchor. OK, um, for example, if Again, coming back to the building, you usually have some strong pillars that the building's weight rests on, isn't it? So if I want to have strong faith, I need an anchor of the word of God and the, uh, the person of God in my life. So without that, I can read. I can read this whole course and I can develop my faith. But it won't be strong because I'm not connected to the word. The word has not become a part of me. OK, so if I want strong faith, I need to dwell in the word. That's the only way to get strong faith. And in my relationship with Jesus, OK, then I can have very strong faith. So if you look at somebody like um, Apostle Paul, he took three missionary journeys. You read about the life of Paul. Very interesting. How he went um, into very difficult places. People were opposing him. So many things happened. They beat him up. So many things happened. But his faith was not shaken. Right? How can you get this kind of faith? You need to be in the word. You need to have a strong relationship with God. And another thing that I can add to this list is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The third thing that makes a very big difference. Because when you uh, read about the disciples, when Jesus was being crucified, you find that they were also scared. They were also weak. They were not determined. But something changed in the acts of the apostles. They all became so powerful. You know, one by one, they all started stepping out. There was Peter, John, you know, um, uh, then you read about the new ones like Barnabas, Paul. What made the difference in their lives? The baptism in the Holy Spirit. Okay, So these are all elements which kind of add to our faith. And we can keep our faith strengthened when we have these, um, you know, additions as well. Okay, But otherwise, the simple answer to your question is word of God. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, second, how to have faith in a very difficult time? Same thing. If you have strong faith, if you develop strong faith, then you can stand even in a tough time. I already mentioned about Apostle Paul, how he stood you know, in the midst of opposition. So as long as you have strong faith in your heart, you may have a lot of um, uh, doubts in your mind, but you should not let that affect you. You have to carry the faith in your heart and say, for example, Abraham, God has promised he is going to have a son. But 25 years, you can imagine all the thoughts that may have gone through his mind. Is it going to happen? Is it? Did I hear correct doubts, questions? But what does the faith in the heart say? It will happen. right? So in a tough time, you need to carry strong faith. Then you can live through that season without um, shaking. Brother, what is the third question? Something you said, third? Mustard seed. Yeah. So he said, why did God choose mustard seed as an example? So if you read, um, you know, some commentaries, what they say is, in, in um, um, you know, at that time or, or in that region, uh, like the Judean region and all, the mustard seed that Jesus was talking about, that is a tree which when you plant, it is so tiny. The seed is so tiny. But apparently this mustard seed that Jesus is referring to, once you plant it, it becomes a huge tree. It becomes a mighty tree. So maybe Jesus is trying to help us understand. You can start small, but it can grow very large. OK, so that could be uh, uh, the Bible doesn't have any scripture that says that is the reason. But I'm just uh, sharing my view. OK, I hope it's helpful. OK, let's move on. It's good to ask questions because 
then you um, you know we we are able to settle these matters in our hearts now coming here to the chat there are a couple of questions uh, by nidel he says what is the meaning of god has given to everyone a measure of faith and how is it different or similar to the gift of faith okay so nidel the measure of faith is simply you see when we talk about um you know the grace of god the gift of god that he gives us we operate by faith we cannot operate without faith so the grace of god in my life will operate the gifts of god in my life will operate on the basis of my faith okay so if i don't have faith they will not operate therefore uh, god does give us a measure of faith to start with Okay, so that is what the measure of faith is, uh, Nadel, and God has given it to us. Um, but then, the gift of faith, gift of faith is just a gift. It's one of the gifts, and I think we discussed about it uh, last time in First uh, Corinthians twelve. When you uh, read through the nine gifts, there is one gift known as the gift of faith. So that is different. It's just a gift, okay, which um, operates at certain times. but a measure of faith is something that we begin with to operate um, in all the gifts i hope that makes it clear for you the next thing that he says is you spoke about george muller who took care of children simply by trusting god for daily provision now was it with the measure of faith or gift of faith with which he trusted god to provide okay that's an interesting question so i can only give you my personal view okay so my personal view is as i told you these are two separate things measure of faith is what we carry and we have to make it grow but gift of faith comes and goes because it's a gift it just comes in that moment when we need it because it's a gift so uh, it could have been it could have been both is what i feel um, nadel uh, george muller because he was depending on god for everything he must have already had a good like a strong faith or a big measure of faith at this point uh, and he could even have received a gift of faith from god to um, receive that answer at that time so it could be a combination of the two is what i feel okay moving to the next question he says um, is there any slight difference between faith hope and trust okay faith hope and trust hmm so um faith and faith hope and trust you know if you just look at it in the english language they're kind of um overlapping terms faith hope right and trust around the same meaning you know we would uh, attribute to them so faith is to believe through faith we believe but in the english language hope is um it may happen it may not happen for example i hope it rains today in english when i say that it means it could rain it may not rain okay trust is similar to faith when you're putting uh, your you're believing you know regarding something so in the english this is how the meaning comes but we will study later in the bible hope has a different meaning and a very connected meaning to faith so in the um, you know in in the greek language when you use when you look at the word hope it's it's almost like faith when you know we say that uh, i hope things hoped for things hoped for are very sure in the greek language it's not maybe maybe it will uh, rain maybe it won't rain that's in english but in the greek when you use the term hope it means very similar to faith meaning it's sure it's very sure okay all right so nidel i hope it helps you i know it's like a play of words so i just gave you whatever little bit of clarity i have um shall we move on oh there's another question okay or a comment one second brother i'll just come to you uh, sanjay says uh, george muller came from a wealthy family but he left everything uh, like uh, francis of assisi to totally depend on god's word and his promises it requires faith for that yeah that's true 
that's true sanjay thank you for uh, adding that um, piece of information it, it's really helpful um, yes brother you have another question or something Okay, so um, I can share the answer to this, but it may be a little elaborate and not necessarily fitting into our subject for now. So maybe I can share with you later and we will proceed with our content for now. Is that fine? Okay, great. So let's continue here. Um, we talked about uh, faith and we understood, uh, you know, how faith really operates and uh, in the last class i touched upon the sovereignty of god and said that god is able to do whatever he likes he's a good god that's why he does good things but he can do whatever he likes okay so then as a believer we said so much about faith measure of faith uh, your faith grows exceedingly faith is like a muscle make it grow why do you need if God can do whatever he wants, let him do whatever he wants. Why should I have faith? Right? Is that a right position? Is that a right position? No. And we will try to answer why. That's not a right position. So the way God has chosen uh, for faith to operate is uh, with the existence of his sovereignty. He can do whatever he wants, but at the same time, he tells us, have faith. If you read about the life of Jesus, so many times Jesus will refer to the term faith. He'll say, great faith. You know, never seen faith like this. Or, or um, have faith like a mustard seed. You know, you can move the mountains. Or uh, you would find that um, he'll rebuke people. Where is your faith? So much Jesus is talking about faith. But why? Why is it needed? God is all-powerful. He can just decide, I'll do this, I'll bless this person, or I'll bless that person, or, you know, I'll make that person a strong, another person, I'll make them rich. God can do, right? Then why, how, why should my faith even matter if God can do anything that he wants? Okay? That is something that we battle with. However, we find that there is a wonderful combination of God being all powerful and God wanting faith from man. So uh, I'll give you a homework. You can all go and read Hebrews chapter 11. Okay, write it down. Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, go back and meditate. Okay, don't just read. Reading is you just quickly go through. What is meditate? You think about it. You read and you think about it. Read. Actually, the word meditate has to do with reading loudly. So read, listen to your own voice, think about it, right? Say it, meditate. In that passage, there are so many names. You'll find many names, Abraham, Sarah, uh, you know, you will find uh, Abel. You will find, uh, um, uh, what are the other names? David, Samson, so many names are there. Why are the names there in that passage? Because in Hebrews chapter 11, the writer talks about faith. These are all men and women who had faith. And God did something marvelous through their lives. So if God was somebody who wanted to overrule, overrule means no matter what we want, passing a judgment to say this is what should be done. right? If that was the case, God would never tell us to have faith. But you find that all these people, when they had faith, God worked with them. And wonderful things took place. Um, even Joshua, we, we said, we referred to his name in the past sessions, the walls of Jericho. Joshua had faith when God told him, unusual, I'm going to bring down the walls. He uh, trusted God and the walls came down. So uh, we find that God has worked through the faith of men and women. So it's not like he 
does his own thing and our faith doesn't matter it's not like that because throughout we see so many people when they had faith mighty things took place okay now um right now moving on yeah so we we have addressed this now we've understood all this now why is there um why is it like this god being sovereign and him wanting us to have faith because god has established it that way okay god is the one who established it that way now the second thing is there are there are times that god can work independently without depending on our faith okay so it happens especially when it comes to the world events for example at the time when jesus was born we don't know how many people really believed that the son of god will be born but god did not need to depend on the faith of men in his calendar in his timeline he knew that jesus should be born at this time so he acted sovereignly he did not depend on the faith of man or in other words he acted independent of man's faith okay so it is um, there are times when god works independent of the faith of man now the other reason why there is the sovereignty of god as well as the need for faith is because god wants us to engage okay so god wants us to involve uh, and i have talked about this in the prayer prayer and intercession where i said that god uh, has fully deputized man on the earth so when man prays god works okay so there is a co laboring or a partnership that god establishes with man in the same way when it comes to faith god wants us to have faith he can do but he will depend on our faith it's very um, difficult to accept this that he's such a great god why does he need my faith isn't it but he wants us to engage with him and look at the beauty of this god wants to do great things but when we carry faith independent of who we are right i'm not reading the scriptures here but you can go back and read it it says independent of our gender you can be a man you can be a woman you can be young you can be old you can be from any nation you can be from any tribe any tongue anybody anybody but if you have faith you can engage with god and god will work on our behalf and god wants everyone to participate isn't that beautiful that god gives us an opportunity anyone with faith can engage with god and be part of the purposes of god and that's how god has made it right so it's really beautiful how he um, enables us to serve him now another reason why uh, we we you know see the sovereignty and faith we recognize that you know god has meant it this way but he has also given certain boundaries for example we talk so much about faith right um, and i have also heard stories of people who have done foolish things uh, with faith you know as the reason or faith as the basis for their decisions but there are boundaries faith yes faith is real faith is active but we cannot stretch it beyond its boundaries for example um you know if there are plans of god for the earth for the world if we have faith that they will change it won't work and i gave you one example i think you know if the lord the bible says uh, there is going to be the second coming of christ and all the world events that are going to take place till you know the the, the thousand years and so many things are there in the bible now if we say god please change it i have faith that you're going to change it or you're going to change the plan of salvation it won't work because i'm using my faith in an area which is outside the boundary did you all understand so we need to understand yes god is sovereign yes my faith works but there are all these other 
factors that I need to keep in mind and only operate where faith should work. For example, you know, if I if I'm foolish and if I just say, um, you know, it, it maybe it's raining and I say no, it'll stop and I'm not going to use the umbrella. If I catch a cold and a fever, it's my foolishness. I could have easily just taken an umbrella, right? Or if we say uh, something funny, like last time I said, you jump off uh, a building and you say, I'm going to get wings and I'm going to fly. It's foolishness, right? And you break your bones. But then in those moments, people say, but what about faith? The Bible says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move the mountains. Correct. It does say, but... We need to operate, uh, you know, in the in the uh, fullness of what the scriptures have to say. You can't just randomly apply anywhere and everywhere and say that it will work. It will work, right? We shouldn't do that, right? So it, there is this this whole understanding of the boundaries, uh, and when we attempt to do something uh, in the wrong realm. It generally doesn't work. So I've heard, uh, you know, unfortunately, I've heard stories of uh, even some missionaries who have taken, uh, like I heard this, I don't know when it happened, but it was quite, um, um, you know, widely talked about at that point that uh, some people said, uh, Jesus walked on water, so we will also walk on water. And some missionaries did this. Right, and they tried walking on um, some very strong stream, and uh, they all died. So I, I'm not; it's a real story. Okay, so things like this, when we um, use the truth of God's word, but then not understanding it uh, in its proper context, and we stretch it, and you know, do all kinds of things, that is not faith. Yeah, that is not faith. So that's how we must understand it. That yes, there is God's sovereignty and my faith, but I need to know how these two work together. I cannot knock uh, on a door which will not open. Okay, so boundaries. We'll have to understand that. And especially when it comes to God's purpose and God's plan for the world and how things are going to unfold. Those are places where we cannot use personal faith to change matters. Okay, now moving on, uh, the next uh, point regarding sovereignty and faith is there will be times uh, which when we will not understand, we won't understand. See, right now, what am I teaching you? Um, I'm teaching uh, all of us that uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, uh, the evidence of things not seen. So have faith, have faith in God. If you have faith, mountains will move, right? You, uh, we hear Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. All this is there. But sometimes there is the realm of mystery. Meaning, we may find that there is a person who has no faith, but they get healed. We may find that, you know, there is a person, they have no faith, but they get blessed. And then we are searching the Bible. Where is it? God, you said have faith. They have no faith. How come they are blessed? How come they are healed? Mysterious. I'm not able to understand. Where is it in the Bible? But you see, sometimes God works like that. He doesn't owe us any explanations. He's a good God. He can do whatever he wants. Thank God he does only good things, right? But sometimes he goes beyond our understanding and he may move, right? And do amazing things even without faith. So those are exceptions. We call it like the realm of mystery, things that we don't understand. It's okay. We don't have to understand everything. Whatever we can understand, whatever we are meant to understand, let us understand. But when there are things that happen independent of our personal faith, but dependent on God's sovereignty, God's grace, God's mercy, you know, God's love, um, we should just let it be. Okay, God, you're doing this. We can't stop you. You do it. Right? So we need to be accepting of some of these things, which are very much in line with the word, but only thing, we are not able to explain it. How can God do this? How can God bless them? They don't deserve it. But who are we to say that somebody deserves, you know, this or that? God has been gracious to all of us. Okay? So that is how we look at it. Um, yeah. So I hope that uh, we have some grip 
regarding sovereignty and uh, personal faith any questions regarding this please feel free no question is a wrong question Okay, so, uh, yes, yes, brother. Oh, why does? Yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. That's what I said, God is almighty. But this is the dynamics, meaning um, this is how he has designed things. Okay. Now, why that is, only God can tell you. <laughs> but I, I can only tell you that this is how it has been designed. So these, these um, both this God being all powerful and us having faith, it works together. Okay. Fine. All right. So uh, if there are no more questions, we can uh, proceed. All right. We'll go to the third chapter here, which is about the life of Jesus and the different occasions when uh, Jesus ministered to people and he commented about their faith or he saw people engaging in faith or the lack of it. So we're going to read about the faith and the ministry of the Lord Jesus. So as I've been saying, um, if God is sovereign and everything is under his control, he does whatever he wants to do, then we shouldn't be talking about faith. But Jesus was the one who spoke so much about faith. So we understand that uh, there is a need for every man and woman to carry faith in their hearts. Okay, so that it, it was Jesus who had faith in God and who spoke uh, and told us to have faith in God. Now let us read one passage. Okay, Mark 11 verse 23 and 24. Mark 11 verses 23 and 24. Hmm. Okay, great. So, see that. Who's teaching about faith? Who's this? Who's explaining all this? Jesus. So Jesus is the one who is telling us how faith operates, right? Uh, he says, if you believe in your heart and you say to the mountain, you know, um, be removed, it'll happen. You will have whatever you say. But go to verse 22. 22. Um, Asapu, can you read that, please? Ah, good. What did Jesus tell the people? Have what? Faith, right? Have faith in God. So it, who told us have faith? Mark 11, 22. What did he say? Have faith in God. Because God knows the value of faith. And that's why he's telling us have faith in God. Okay? Can you tell yourself? Can we do that? Exercise, everyone? Tell yourself. Tell your name. Okay? And say, Nancy, have faith in God. Can you tell that to yourself? Don't tell me, tell yourself. <laughs> Everybody online as well. Okay, very nice. So, Mark 11, 22, don't forget, Jesus said, have faith in God. 
Because if you have faith in God, so many things can change, can transform. That is why he's saying, have faith. Okay, Start with faith. Great things will happen in our lives. So don't forget this. Mark 11, 22. Tell yourself often, hey, have faith in God. Why are you so scared? You know, why are you in unbelief? Wake yourself up and say, don't worry. Have faith in God. God is there. He will do. Okay, so this is the way in which we need to encourage ourselves on the basis of God's word. It was Jesus who taught us about faith. It was Jesus who said, have faith in God. And that is why it is right to talk about faith, even though, uh, you know, there is this aspect of the sovereignty of God. Okay, so now let's move on. Uh, when we think about Jesus, in this passage, Mark 11, Jesus said, have faith in God. Now, some may question, is it applicable now? You know, he told 2,000 years ago. Maybe it's outdated, right? Nowadays, what the file expires, the program expires. You have to use the most updated. So should we update what Jesus said? Jesus said, have faith in God. Do we need a new version now? Are you sure? Okay, you're right because the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever, which simply means that God has not changed his mind. He told those times, he told the disciples, have faith. You know, today what he's telling all of us, same thing, have faith in God. Because when we have faith, like those people who are listed in Hebrews 11, don't worry about listing your name, right? We should not worry so much about being listed. But uh, in our journey with the Lord, we will see day to day, we'll see wonderful things because of faith. Okay, now look at uh, uh, the, um, you know, the journey of Jesus and um, how he responded to faith. So we see that Jesus recognized, recognized, meaning recognized means what? Identify. So how do we identify something, right? On the basis of, um, you know, the symptoms, like how uh, Pastor Jakes was telling us the other day, that uh, there are some conditions in which it's easy to diagnose when there are certain symptoms, okay? But how is it that Jesus recognized faith spiritually, right? God is a spirit and God recognizes. He can sense when there is faith. And in that way, you know, we uh, see here that uh, Jesus was able to sense faith when he found it. So there are incidents, like I told us about the Roman centurion. He came, he said, Jesus, my servant is not well. Uh, and, uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus said, okay, the whole story when Jesus wants to come to his house, but he says, no, only say a word and he will be healed. So Jesus was so blessed by what he heard. He said, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Okay. So it looks like I have not found faith means what? I was looking. I never found it anywhere. Meaning God was always looking. Where is faith? Can I find one person who has faith? And now he's telling this man, I never found but your faith, great, great is your faith. So you see Jesus is demonstrating that God recognizes faith, you know. So when he, I think about it like this, that when God is looking at us, all our hearts, it's like, um, you know, how you have some radar system, you can kind of think of it like that way, right? Something red in, in our hearts. So it's only those things that, he can pick up, he can sense it and say, oh, here, faith is there. Okay, there, faith is there. Faith is here. We can do something. But when there is no faith, we're not giving God anything to work with. Okay, though it sounds uh, crazy that we have to give God something, but Jesus only told us that when we have faith, you know, uh, he will work. And so over here, we are seeing that Jesus recognized, even today, what is God looking for in each of our hearts? Faith. 
he recognizes faith and he also responded wherever there was faith jesus responded he said okay you know you have faith so take this there was one incident in matthew 9 when four friends brought a paralytic man but in this situation jesus saw that you know they had faith and so that man was healed so what was the basis on which jesus is healing all these people faith so he recognized is there faith okay take your healing again there was a woman who came to jesus um, who had bleeding in her body she got healed why on the basis of what faith she carried faith in her heart okay so when there was faith healing happened so jesus recognizes and this woman it's a very interesting story that she touched in a crowd uh, how is it sometimes you know when we are uh, traveling and it's too crowded maybe a train sometimes you know we tend to rub against each other right so there were lots of people who may have rubbed against jesus but he stopped when this woman touched you can imagine jesus 10 15 people have just you know sort of bumped into you and you never stopped for them why did you stop for this one woman because he said wait virtue has gone out of me she touched him with faith you got it that's what jesus recognized even today when all of us are there but what is god looking for where is faith where can i find faith when there is where there is faith there is a release right of the promises of god of the grace of god of the anointing of god the presence of god everything happens why there is faith and faith sort of begins to uh, uh, unfold the works of god so that is how jesus worked even back then and there was a woman she is from uh, canaan she comes to jesus in matthew 15 and her child is uh, oppressed by demons and she just cries out to jesus she says jesus deliver my child needs to be delivered and even over there right jesus tells her the the um, bread is only for the children right but she says lord even the dogs eat the crumb and she kind of asks for a miracle the reason why she does that is because she's not a jewess so when jesus walked on the earth at that time uh, according to the covenant covenant okay you will have a class on covenants according to the covenant the blessings the healings were only supposed to go to uh, the descendants of abraham that is the jews so this lady who came to jesus in matthew 15 she's a canaanite she's outside the covenant so she's begging jesus she's saying my child is oppressed jesus do something and he says i'm sorry the bread is only for the children which means the promises are for the jews but she says even the dogs eat the crumbs and jesus is so impressed he's like wow you know you're outside the covenant but you're still believing that i can do something for you take your miracle right so it's almost like something that was set even in the covenant jesus went around it to release the deliverance to that canaanite woman and what he told that woman was he told her in matthew 15 28 oh woman great is your faith great is your faith let it be to you as you desire she's not even part of the covenant but she got it she got the deliverance through her faith so a woman who carried great faith and she had a desire what was her desire what was her desire that her daughter will be free right that was her desire jesus gave it faith is the substance of things hoped for so we are hoping for some things but do we have faith for it she had faith she was hoping she was desiring my child should be free and jesus she comes and begs jesus but more than begging no jesus is not impressed by her begging 
he doesn't say oh you're begging me so much you're crying so much you're so desperate okay let me bless you he never commented on that he never commented on the begging but he commented on her faith and said great is your faith you know what impressed me about you um, lady great is your faith take no let it be to you as you desire so the bible is showing us that faith um, truly can touch god's heart jesus recognized faith and jesus responded to faith so do we want god to respond god will respond when there is faith in our hearts okay all right so let's uh, move on we can look at a few more things okay uh, now the second uh, section here says jesus asked people if they had faith in order to receive uh in matthew 9 there is this incident where blind men came to jesus okay uh, and jesus said to them do you believe that i am able to do this they said to him yes lord then you know he touched their eyes and said according to your faith let it be to you now again we can ask the question what is the need for jesus to ask blind men whether they believe he can do a miracle right he knows he can see they're already blind but still jesus is checking he's checking faith is there or not you know uh, usually okay i'll not go to that it's another uh, complete concept but uh, jesus is checking for faith only if there is faith he says okay according to your faith let it be done for you so what is the faith that these blind men had what was their faith yeah jesus you are able to heal us so thank god they believed that jesus can fully heal my blindness then what happened he said okay whatever you have believed according to your faith did you believe that you take that according to your faith let it be done for you now um uh, he asked okay, in another incident here a man whose son was demon possessed again mark 9 verses 23 and 24 jesus said to him if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes jesus can do it but he is making a demand of this man and he's saying i want something from you what is that i want you to have faith only if you have faith this will work so jesus is making a demand from that person and he is what is he telling him if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes verse 24 immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears lord i believe help my unbelief so jesus is making a demand for faith in the hearts of people before ministering to them so same thing today you we can imagine jesus asking us what do you want me to do for you do you believe do you believe he may ask us the question what would be our answer do we believe or do we not believe right so it's between jesus and you so you can talk to him about it but you know we find that jesus is he wants to see faith he recognized and responded to faith but he is also asking for faith okay only then he is working in people's lives then what else jesus even encouraged people to have faith in very difficult circumstances so there is this uh, person known as jairus in mark chapter 5 and um, he had a daughter who was dying so he had faith that jesus can uh, heal her he comes to jesus and he says jesus my daughter you know she's not well and all and the people are around suddenly they tell him no, no point jairus forget it your daughter is already dead think about it 
it must have been so devastating at that moment to think that oh no i came for healing but she already died okay so how is the situation it's terrible healing was bad enough they were in need of healing but now the child is dead but in the situation jesus speaks to this man in mark 5 verse 36 as soon as jesus heard the word that was spoken he said to the ruler of the synagogue do not be afraid only believe so even in that situation when the child is dead jesus is encouraging faith and he's saying it looks so dead that not it looks impossible what can happen in this uh, you know scenario nothing good can come out of it child is already dead but jesus is telling that man do you believe only believe okay don't worry don't worry about the situation even if the child is dead you believe right and he encouraged faith only believe what, what were his words do not be afraid only believe how beautiful think about that jesus speaking those words to our hearts today and saying do not be afraid only believe it might be a you know tough financial situation tough uh, family situation health situation uh, it may be you know something in the ministry we are struggling and we are saying lord i cannot see what to do uh, it seems impossible how how can i you know manage this these are the words of jesus do not be afraid only believe right and we know what happened when jairus believed his daughter was raised from the dead it's one of those in um, uh, resurrections that the lord jesus uh, performed and later even lazarus lazarus was in the tomb and this time the situation is worse because uh, the scriptures tell us in uh, john 11 verse 39 um yeah jesus said take away the stone martha the sister of him who was dead said to him lord by this time there is a stench for he has been dead four days okay so it's worse right jairus his daughter just died here lazarus is in the tomb for four days and he's stinking so martha is telling jesus forget it it's over right it's over four times four days he's already in the tomb jesus don't even try what is jesus his response verse 40 jesus said to her did i not say to you that if you would believe you would see the glory of god you see how jesus speaks so different isn't it earlier to jairus he said do not be afraid only believe to martha he saying did i not say to you that if you would believe you would see the glory of god so don't look at the hopelessness if we look at circumstances the natural um you know um setting we'll say yeah it's so hopeless even god can't help me but we should not speak like that because in both these situations jesus said can you believe if you can believe i can do something for you no matter how hopeless the situation seems all right so even this morning i just pray that uh, god will stir up that faith in our hearts he is looking for faith jesus recognizes and responds to faith according to your faith let it be done for you do you believe that i can do this for you these are the questions that jesus asks us now let me look at the chat here okay so uh, daniel is saying is it the confession from those blind men which made jesus to heal them or were they having faith within them before itself so usually we say daniel that um, when we speak it's it's an it's a um, expression or a, a confession of our faith so obviously they had faith in their hearts on the basis of which they spoke okay so i don't know if that answers your question but yeah that's what i want to say um is that all right okay great thank you 
Fine. So let's close off with a word of uh, prayer here. Um, I want to request somebody from the online batch to please pray aloud. Can you please do that for us? Yeah, could you kindly unmute and pray a brief prayer? Okay. All right. Um, I'm just going to ask Sam. Sam, can you? I can. Okay, Nisha. Yeah. Um, okay, Nisha, please go ahead. Yes. Nisha. yes. Father, we just thank you for the treasures that you are sharing with us. We thank you that, God, it is your intention to build faith like the faith that you admire, Jesus. And I thank you that for every one of us, God, nothing is impossible because you are the God who, who justifies and makes our faith see flesh. We just thank you for the precious lessons we've learned. And God, I just pray that each of us would rise up with a new form of faith today. Build us up in you, Lord, to be people that you, whose faith you admire. Thank you for uh, Pastor Nancy and for the lesson that you have imparted to each of us. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name, we ask all these things. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nisha. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, uh, continue to have faith. Have faith in God. So we'll close off for now. We'll meet in the next session. Um, bye for now and have a good day. God bless.